By now, I think we all know the dangers of social media, especially when it comes to children. Young people are especially susceptible to a lot of mental health issues due to over exposure to social media. And this is one of these things, I, I've been talking about this for many years now on this channel, and, and every time I bring up the dangers of social media, a lot of people come back at me and, and tell me that I'm an old fuddy-duddy, I'm a boomer, you know, this is a boomer take, stay off of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that crap, you know, that, that's, that's, you're an old man, DT, us young people, we love social media, there's nothing wrong with it, all my friends hang out on social media, yada, 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 yada. And now more and more people are starting to awaken. <laughs> now we even have the U.S. Surgeon General here in the last couple of days starting to take notice. And the U.S. Surgeon General wants to put a warning on social media sites, basically kind of like the warning we put on things like tobacco and alcohol and other drugs. We even have warnings on things like car seats and baby formulas. You know, there's always these warnings on these products that have some potential harm if misused and right now I think social media does fall under that category so there's been many studies done on social media and the effect it has on its users and what we know is that the people that spend three hours a day on social media and which is crazy I can't imagine spending three hours a day on any social media uh, platform but a lot of people around the world probably countless millions hundreds of millions of people probably do spend that much time unfortunately on social media sites like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and things like that and, and if you spend three hours a day or more on these sites what studies have found is you have twice the risk of mental health issues such as anxiety and depression social media has led had some teenagers to commit suicide. We've had these issues with Instagram in the past where Instagram has caused some young girls especially to commit suicide, you know, because social media is this weird world. It's not the real world, right? It's, it's all, especially on a site like Instagram, which is mostly women posting hot pictures of themselves. You know, it's the objectification of women and which is not healthy for women, obviously, in this case, but I would also say it's not healthy for men to be viewing that kind of stuff and, and to be to, to think it's normal to overly sexualize women you know the way that uh, again is promoted on a lot of these social media networks and part of the reason why the u.s surgeon general wants to go ahead and force the social media sites and the social media apps to have a warning right up front you know uh, basically your surgeon general's warning hey the use of social media can cause mental health issues is because the sites themselves these social networks they don't do a good job protecting children. In many cases, they're not actually trying to protect children. In fact, many of these social networks, the largest ones, are actually trying to take advantage of children and their naivete. Now, most of the big social networks, they won't allow anybody under the age of 13 to sign up for an account, but the problem is it's not very difficult for someone under the age of 13 to actually create an account. It's very easy to get around that age restriction because again, these social networks, they're not trying that hard to prevent kids to, from being on their platforms. TikTok has this weird uh, 60 minute time limit for users under the age of 18 because they don't want children to spend that much time. They don't want a, a child to spend all day looking at video content on TikTok, which is admirable. But that 60 minute time limit for those under 18, that is not a hard limit because all you need to do after the 60 minute time limit runs out is to re-enter your password and then you can keep watching TikTok, I guess, for the next 60 minutes until the next 60 minute timeout. So it's not a hard timeout. And I think part of the reason why social media is starting to cause so much anxiety and depression among teenagers is the fact that, well, let me tell you a story. If you're a young person watching this video right now, I'm going to tell a story and see if this matches what happens in real life. Say you reach the age of, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 years old, whatever age it is that your parents finally decide to buy you a phone and give you a phone because they think it's important for you to have that cell phone. And all the other kids around your age are also starting to get phones. And then 
at this age, we'll, we'll say it's 12 years old, right? And, and you used to spend all your time interacting with your friends, talking with your friends, having fun with your friends, playing games, doing, doing whatever activities with your friends. All of a sudden you all have phones. Now what do you do? Well, now you and all your friends spend time staring at a phone, you know, playing on social media. You no longer really talk to each other. There's very little conversation. There's very little just normal face-to-face -face kind of interactions with you and your friends anymore. All of a sudden, you, you had all these friends, and now technically you still have these friends, but they're not, it's not the same friendship as before because now everybody is addicted to that phone, to their social media apps. All of a sudden, all the conversations you would have had in life, they're no longer there. The conversation stops because everybody's on the phone, right? Gradually, all your friends start drifting away, right? They're pulled away from you by social media. I think part of the reason why social media is harmful is not necessarily that social media itself causes harm, it's just social media and the time that people spend on social media prevents them from doing things that are actually healthy. It's not necessarily that the social network itself is unhealthy for you, although I would say it probably is, but it prevents you from spending that time doing much more healthy things. For example, if you're spending three hours a day on social media, which is insane. That's so much time wasted. Think about that time. That's time you could have been interacting with real people in real life. You could have been interacting with friends and family, face-to-face -face interactions, real human relationships, which we know is from a mental health standpoint, is healthy. Other things that we know are healthy in life include getting plenty of rest, getting plenty of sleep every night. Well, if you're addicted to social media, that's going to cut into some of that time you should have been sleeping because you, know, you know these people that stay up all night watching crap like TikTok or you know checking their face page or whatever it happens to be, right? That's taking away from that healthy activity, that, that sleep. Also being physically active. You should actually do physical activity on occasion. You should go outdoors. You know, you should be out in the sunlight. And if you're addicted to social media, obviously those hours on social media cut into that activity. So again, you know, social media pulls you away from all the healthy things in life you should be doing, not just healthy, but also the productive things in life. Think about your schoolwork if you're a young person. If you're a teenager, you should be focusing on your education. You're not focusing on your education if you spend three hours a day on Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is that kids do. Is Snapchat still a thing? I'm not sure. So things have gotten so bad that now the U.S. Surgeon General sees this actually as a health crisis, especially for our young people. He sees this as a youth mental health crisis and he feels that it's his duty to actually push through legislation to require these social media companies to actually give out this warning, very similar to what you get on tobacco and alcohol. Now, naturally, some people are going to be for this. Some people are going to be against this. And obviously, you guys, I'm sure, are going to want to know my opinions on this. Well, obviously, you guys know I am not a fan of social media at all. Now, as far as should these social media sites, should they be regulated in such a way where they have to warn young people about the use of their sites? And, you know, when it comes to children, I don't mind this. I, I, doing this for adults, with adults, it's different because as an adult, you're, you should be responsible for your own decisions in life. You know, that's one thing. But I do think with children and these mega social media sites, things like Facebook, for example, and Instagram and Twitter, you know, you're fighting billion dollar corporations, right? And these young people, they don't have fully formed brains just yet. Like if you're 13, 14 years old, you have no idea of the dangers of social media. You, you can't even fathom it because, you know, you're just, you're not educated enough in this area. And you have these billion dollar companies that are designed to take advantage of these kids. These kids, they don't have a chance against that mega corporation. Take a company like Meta, for example, which is a huge billion dollar, if not trillion dollar company. I'm not actually sure. Meta's valuation is very high. It's a gigantic company. And Meta has all of these data scientists and these engineers and, you know, these computer scientists. They have like these brilliant people, thousands and thousands of brilliant genius human beings that are working on this problem, th this problem as far as how to exploit people to use their site and to keep them using their site, to addict these people to using that site, including children. 
So if you have, for example, a 16 year old daughter, does she even stand a chance against that army of engineers that works at a company like Meta? Obviously not, right? That is not a fair fight. So at some point, I don't mind in this situation, the government stepping up and actually requiring a company like Meta to actually warn kids not to use that site or hey, using this site could actually damage you. I think that would that that's the responsible thing to do. In the past, what we have learned with cigarettes, for example, tobacco use has drastically reduced over the last several decades due to having that warning on those packs because people, when they're provided the right information, tend to do the responsible thing. I think we'll see that with social media. Once you actually start giving people factual information on the health problems associated with social media, we'll see less and less people actually going down that road. But that's just my thoughts on it. Let me know your opinions in the comments down below. Do you think social media sites should be forced to give people a warning? Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daylist, DDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Method, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tianrin, Morgan, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this little rant about social media, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.